morning. We wandered into the hospital room, filled with a bit of life and spark after the day. I vaguely remember noticing the room was more subdued. It was dimmer, the lights weren't as bright. There were no fluorescent lights, just one smaller light. And she was lying there with bedclothes up to here, subdued and quieter. We, we greeted each other with a kiss and then she pulled back and said, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is they found out what's wrong with me. The bad news is it's cancer. There was more than that, but I didn't take it in. That, those few words shattered, broke the foundations of my life. It, it all just fell apart. Suddenly, I went from reasonably bright to lost, confused, bewildered. I grabbed for a chair and sat down. I'm not sure what we talked about that night. Mum died two and a half years later, thereabouts, of that same cancer. There were some beautiful and lovely moments and times in that two and a half years. But there was also this overriding threat of darkness and despair, of the struggle and the pain of treatments and other things and a, a vast dealing with the reality of what was going on and, and working through it. When her death came, it was peaceful for her, but it, it cut the final cord of connection and belonging in this material space. And there was grief and pain like I'd not known before. This is Easter. And Easter begins in the pre-dawn darkness. The darkness of Friday, the darkness of, of waiting through Saturday, the darkness of the world in which we live, taking in the news of the day or the news of our own lives. It, it, it's, the, it's the time of people in, in Ukraine, in the villages and towns and cities, waiting for the tanks to come in or the, the planes and the bombs and missiles to explode. It's, it's, it's the people of Gaza and the West Bank waiting for what will be next. Will food arrive? Will there be more hostilities, more warfare? It's the, it's the Israeli families whose, whose family members are held hostage or who are waiting for the retaliation strikes. It's the war zones of our world where people wait. It's the refugee camps where, where people gather and wait and wait and wait and hope. It's the places of impoverishment where people eke out a living and seek to feed their families for the day. It's the place of indigenous peoples across the world who are pushed off their lands, whose culture and language is lost, who lose their way and yearn for a return to what might have been, hope. It's the suffering and struggling of the earth itself under the weight of human aggression and digging up the resources of destroying rainforests, of polluting the waterways and the sky and the earth. It's, it's our lives as we, as we deal with the grief and the pain of loss or the struggles of daily life and the confusion and the despair of seeking out meaning. It's the homes where women and children wait for the one who supposedly loves them to come home and will he be in a good mood or a bad mood? Will he be angry or violent? Will he be under the influence of alcohol or substances? Or will this be a good night? Or will this be the last night? That's the darkness of our world and our lives. The, the, and, and the story begins in the pre-dawn darkness. Mary, and, and maybe there are others, it says we in, in John's story. In other stories, it's got three or four or, or more of the women. The women who go to do the work of death. Who go to, to give dignity to the body and prepare it for a proper burial, who go to the tomb, out of the safe place, into the darkness of the world and the danger of the world that has killed Jesus. 
they go to do the work of death. And as Mary wanders, it's her story in John, she wanders and wonders. The one who loved her, who, who, who knew her and loved her, who drew her out of, the, out of her own self-loathing and the, and, the self -loathing and the loathing of the world to give her dignity and respect, who treated her as a human being, one who is lovely and lovable, the one who loved her and whom she loved is dead. And with it, the hopes and the dreams of not only her, but, but this community of people and the masses of, of the ordinary people. He's dead and lying in a tomb. And as she goes, she wonders who will roll away the stone, the stone that covers the entrance to the tomb and the stone in front of the tomb and the tomb itself symbolises our own inner darkness the things we hide from and hide from the world, our fear, our helplessness, our powerlessness. When I sat in that hospital room and through those couple of years, what I noticed most was helplessness and powerlessness. There was nothing I could do. All that I might know or all that I might have or anything I could know or try or do would not be enough to save mum. In this tomb is the powerlessness, the fear, the despair, the anguish, the anger, the, the, all of that stuff that we hold and often hide from the world. Our illusions and delusions and the fears of what might be hidden behind a stone in a tomb. And yet as she goes in this gentle pre-dawn light, she looks up wondering who will roll away the stone. And it looks like the stone is not there. There's a space. And she gets closer and sure enough, the stone has been moved and the tomb is open with a gentle morning light going in. And she wonders what's happened, who's taken the body. And she runs back to the disciples to tell them, Someone's stolen the body, surely the tomb's open. And they run, and they run in. And it is empty. What, what held their fears and their anguish and their despair, what was symbolised in the dead body, is not there. It's empty. And the light is getting in. And Mary turns, bewildered and confused and uncertain, and sees a figure, assuming it to be the gardener at this hour of the morning. She says, have you taken the body? Where is it? Do you know? Can you tell me? And as she rattles on, she hears her name, Mary, Mary, Mary. And it cuts through the voice, the name, the knowing. Teacher, Rabboni, Rabbi? Is it you? Is it really you? And she lunges for this figure, this, this one in front of her, who says, no, Mary, it's me, but it's not me. It's, I'm not yet returned to where I need to go. Don't try and cling to me. Let me go. But go and tell the disciples what you've seen and heard. I am risen. And what does that mean and what does she say? And how do they hear it? They don't believe, they can't believe, just as we don't believe, don't understand. What is this mystery of resurrection? This, this tomb that no longer contains that which we fear and the despair and the anguish. What, what does it mean for, for love to break through and penetrate the darkness? To, to not just restore hope, but true hope. Hope that, that sees through death and through violence and through all the, the things of life and the world to proclaim another way. That this one who comes, who, who gives of himself on a cross, who sacrifices himself in love 
for this way of God, this, this alternate, this reality in the world, shows the way of love. And that love can penetrate beyond death and violence and hatred. And it's the only power that can. It's what Martin Luther King Jr. says. Hate cannot overcome hate, only love can. Darkness cannot diminish darkness, only light can. And the light comes into the tomb and all our pain and all our fear and all our helplessness and powerlessness is brought into the light. The light of love, of grace, of the mystery of resurrection, whatever that means in our world. Whatever it meant for me when mum died and I lived in that place of grief, that liminal space of not knowing, of confusion, of being lost, of having the world turned upside down and the bottom of your world falling out. What did it mean? One day I woke up months after, after mum's death and I realised that I was smiling and laughing, that I had good days and life was okay. I could live. I could live again. I bore, bear the scars of her death and dying. As Jesus bore the scars when he comes to the disciples on Easter night, through locked doors and solid walls, materialising in their place of fear and, and despair to reveal life and love and hope. And, and I think God came to me in that space, in that strange, disoriented space and gave me hope and life. Out of my experience of mum's death, I understood pain. I understood what it felt like to have your life turned upside down. To feel a deep pain inside that, that just is cutting. And I learned to see it in others. And to sit with it with others. This is Easter. Easter. Easter is the most significant message for our world today, for the people in Ukraine and those of Russia who are experiencing bombs and fighting, for those who are in the midst of it, those who are firing the guns and on the receiving ends, for the people in Gaza who are hungry and starving, who have lost friends and family by the thousand. For those in Israel who don't know what's going on and don't like the fighting and warfare either, but are caught in it or who are waiting for news of their loved ones. For the people in, in parts of Africa and Middle East and Asia and, and Americas and even here in Australia. For those women and children who live in the darkness of domestic violence. People who live with their fear and their loneliness and their hopelessness. Easter comes breaking into the tombs of our lives to bring light and hope and life. That God is with us and that love is more powerful than violence and death and hatred. And love will win and love will save us. And it doesn't matter what happens to us, this love of God will never let us go and is always with us and will give us new life. And we can live into this new life now. That's what we're invited to do. And that's what Easter is about. It comes in the darkness of that morning and it brings light into that darkness to give us hope, to give us peace and freedom and life, to flourish, not just you and me, but everyone and the earth itself. This is Easter. Will you, will I, will we live into it? Will Easter transform our world this year? Let's pray that it does. Let's pray that we become people of that Easter hope, sharing that with the world in which we love.